Now the next thing we need to do is to cut a slip for the top here to match the frame. And cut a slip here for the bottom. And you can see where I had the wedges in there and I pushed in some sand and cement, some sharp sand and cement, 3 to 1 mix, just to pack it up underneath it. Recessed it a little bit. I'm going to use this here, which is a piece of matching window board. I'm just going to rip it with a jigsaw and fit the slips top and bottom. You can see where I foam in the side here as well. I've trimmed it all back, so it's all ready for the silicone in it. You can also see, this is an opportunity to see that, the original frame was 20 mil wider than, than uh, the PVC frame and to get around this you've got three options, you can either push the frame in fully, push it out to meet the brick or leave it in the middle. I pushed it all the way in so that I wouldn't have to change the architrave or the um, skirting and do major work on the inside and I'll bridge that gap there with um, the matching silicone. This is one of the slips here after being ripped and um, now I'm just going to plane it. I'm just plane it with electric plane, just as if you were playing it with a timber. Now I've trimmed this now and I'm going to cut I'm going to stick it up here with just put a, bit, a few blobs of silicone on the back of it. Now I'll put the two uh, slips in top and bottom and uh, just move them to the final phase now where, um, where uh, I'm just going to put the silicone in on the side. There's a massive gap along the side here because of the difference in uh, in diameters of the old wooden frame and uh, this PVC frame, but uh, I'm going to bridge it with silicone. Um, you can see there now, we're just the bottom. These tires are all going to have to be replaced at some stage, but not now. I'm not doing it now. So you can see here where then um, we just filled up the back end of that with, with cement, right? And the slip went in underneath. You can see there where the slip went in at the top. We have to bridge that gap up there as well, and down on the side, all filled with foam, by the way. Uh, because uh, it drums down the sound, so I uh, always make sure that you, after you've done everything else, fill any cavity that's left at foam. Now I've taped up this uh, side here, it's the only way to walk a bead that wide. I'm just going to infill that now with silicone and walk it down. You can get slips to do this oiler. Just going in the silicone, right? And using a piece of steel they're just shaped into a slightly concave right this is one of the brackets that come with the door and then just draw it down making sure that the tape is exposed on both sides when you pull the tape off you don't want a large connection I know I have to go back on that little piece that I've missed but you can see how it's done while it's still wet start to unwind the tape pulling it away from the um, bead of silicone. Okay, and it'll take with it, wrap it up like this, and it'll take with it all the excess that's on the tape and leave a reasonably clean line. You see the way there's a kind of a bit of an edge here where I cut it with the tape. But what you do in that situation is let it set, provided you have a good profile, let it set, okay, and that's set now for a day. What I'll do now is all you do is put a, a small bead of it along the inside of it, anywhere that there's a bit like that. You don't have to be careful putting it on because it's going onto a solid base. So, put it on like that, and then just wipe it down, and it'll fill up. a little bit of a gap that was there. You can also trim this side to get a nice straight line as well after it's all set. You just get the standing knife and put it straight across the, any of the blobs there and you'll take it right down. So you'll end up with a nice clean line on both sides depending on the amount of effort you want to put into it. By the way if you're walking, if you're not walking with brick you're walking with cement render and you only have a small gap none of this is uh, none of this, these measures are required. Just run your finger along it as long as it's still with your finger you'll get a nice bead on it. But when you're working with brick, you'll have to tape it up or you'll make a mess of the brick. And when you're working with a wide bead, it sometimes like this has to be done in a couple of stages. There it is trimmed just to show you how good it can be. Now that finishes the outside. 
Now I've only large holes like this, deep holes. I'm going to fill it up with a bit of bonding. This is a lightweight on the plaster. That's excellent for filling large holes or bridging, whatever work you have to do, under the skim coat. Now, see the way it's still a bit runny there? You want this to hold in large holes, so a little bit more, a little bit more. So you can make some flour. See, it takes up a whole lot of it in one go. Try to do that with any top coat plaster and it'll be cracking back out again. Do it a dozen times. We'll just leave it like that for a few minutes and then we'll come back and just scrape out the top bit of it to allow for the skim coat about uh, an eighth of an inch. Get it down below the surface. See there? It's just far too rough to be trying to put a bead of caulk along there, so we'll take it all back and tidy it up. Just back about an inch with a scraper. Now what we need to do is mix up a bit of skim coat. This is your top coat plaster. Now we want to get it to the consistency of butter. Very creamy butter. <laughs> We're nearly there. We're nearly there. Now that's perfect. Okay, what you need is uh, just a regular um, paint scraper. Just uh, use it to fill in the bits like this. Okay? And then what you need is a large taping knife. Okay? And that'll give you that lovely clean edge. Right, all the plaster now is done on the internals here. You can get a look at that now. So I'm going to put a, uh, a bead around here to finish it off. Now the tiles are coming up here so I'm not doing nothing with the tiles, there's new tiles going in. But um, this will finish off the internal of the door because the paint is not going to be part of this video. And uh, um, So when, when you're finishing the inside don't use the silicone based product, use caulk because caulk is really easy to work with and uh, it, it's, it's, uh, you can wipe it off very easy, it doesn't have any of that, um, uh, that solvent qualities that um, uh, silicone has. So use caulk when you're finishing off the inside by putting a bead on, by using it on the internal. Just put your finger on it, give it a slight rub like that. Look at that, lovely beard. Consistent thickness all the way down, you can just keep moving your finger back and forth, it's just a simple case of working a bit off the end of it. Crumbly, it's not even there. Uh, not even like it, doesn't have none of the qualities of a uh, silicone. Finished now, I'm ready for painting, all caulked.